a lot of times when I go places, people kind of look at me funny, right? Okay, so sometimes I go to the airport and they're like, what's that going on, girl? What's that she got going on there, right? Because you look a little different than most people. So I usually have a lot of nun stories. So can I tell you a nun story real quick? Okay, so this just happened today. So you're the first audience to hear this story. So I'm in the airport with my, you know, ginormous cup of coffee, which I do. And I'm drinking my coffee. And people think you can't hear. Like, they think this is soundproof, but it's not. I can hear everything you say, okay? So I'm standing there. I'm drinking my coffee. And this man and the woman are standing kind of next to me, like this far away. And they're looking at me, and they're like, and the guy's like, you should totally do that. That's a get out of jail free card. Do it. Because he's trying to tell her that I get out of jail free. And I'm like, I don't get out of jail free. And they kind of looked at me, and they're like, because they're scared, right? Because they don't understand. And it's kind of funny because people are like, what, what is this all about? What is this all about? And it says something like my life, why I'm dressed like this, is it says something about what I love. So I just want to ask you a question, just something to think about. What do you love? What captivates your heart? What sets you on fire? And I loved what Annie was talking about earlier about being very authentic. And I have to admit, I'm a total like fake World Cup fan right now, okay? I've spent like three days on the, cou on the couch watching World Cup, entire matches, you know? And I'm like, I should probably get off the couch at some point. You know, I'm eating popcorn and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm falling in love with this game that I, quite frankly, I don't know anything about. Because everybody knows that volleyball is the best sport. I mean, I, I well know that. So... I find it just interesting because there's something captivating about sports. There's a reason why we love it. And so in our country, we call that game what? We call it soccer, right? What does the rest of the world call it? But what is another name that it's sometimes referred to as? Do you know? It's sometimes called the beautiful game. The beautiful game. And it's very interesting how God speaks to us through beauty because God is very beautiful. And I was reading an article last year by Archbishop Chaput, and he was writing on the title of the article was called, yeah, give it up for him. The title of the article was called The Evidential Power of Beauty. And he told this story of a friend of his, and he says, my friend loves to tell the story when she first learned about God. And she was a little girl about five years old. And it was one June night, cloudless, moonless night, her dad took her out into the backyard. And he took her by the hand, and he told her to look up at the sky. And she looked up as a little girl, and there were thousands and thousands of stars in the sky. And then he leaned down next to her, and he said, God made the world beautiful because he loves us. There's something so captivating about that beauty. And I don't know about you, but have you ever just gazed at the night sky? It's amazing. The creation of God is so beautiful. And I found a very short video. It's actually time-lapse photography. And this guy just put his video camera in the night sky in South Dakota from horizon to horizon. And then he did a time-lapse photography of everything he captured. So I wanted to show you like two minutes of this video. And I just want to invite you to notice two. You're going to notice a lot of things. But I just want to invite you to notice two things. Number one, just notice the sheer amount of stars there on the sky. And then secondly, notice the colors of the night sky. Can you show the video, please?
It's not been Photoshopped. There's, there's no Photoshop to it. There's nothing. It's just a guy leaving his camera out in an open field in the night. God made the world beautiful because he loves us. I just want to show you one last image of, maybe you've seen this guy before. He looks kind of familiar. Um, the interesting thing about this particular picture, if I could just explain it to you a little bit, is that it was painted by a young woman named Akiana. And she was, she was actually eight years old when she painted it. So she's a child prodigy, and at the age of four, she began to have visions of heaven. But her parents were atheists, so that was kind of a problem, you know what I'm saying, right? So she was so insistent that her mother finally got her art supplies. And as eight years old, she paints this. And she called it, the title of the painting is called Prince of Peace. And she said the dark part of Jesus' face represents his suffering, and the light part represents his resurrection. And he comes to us as a Prince of Peace. If you've read the book Heaven is for Real, you'll notice that this is the picture that that boy, it's the picture that he recognized when his dad laid all the photos out of Jesus, all the pictures out of Jesus, the little boy said, that's him, that's the man I saw. So I'm not saying that this is what Jesus looks like, I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's amazing to think of, because Akiana says this, she says, she's in her, young, she's in her early 20s now, she says that there's colors in heaven that don't exist on earth, so she has to kind of make do. I mean, imagine going to Hobby Lobby with that one, right? You're like, what color are you looking for? What kind of a green? Oh, really, where'd you see it? Um, yeah, I'm not really, you know. The world is so big, and there's so much beauty out there because God is beautiful. And he makes the world beautiful because he loves us. And as we see this man staring, this is not just any man, as we know. It is the man who is, is truly beautiful. The man who holds nothing back from us. The man who gives everything for us, who's truly masculine, fully alive, fully vibrant, fully everything we could possibly hope for. And he's the deepest longing of all we love. So there's a reason why we love beauty. There's a reason why we're captivated by it, whether that's football, whether that's art, whether that's creation. But first and foremost, it's the human person. It's you and me because we're made in the image and likeness of God. The fullness of beauty is found in this face, is found in this man who comes to seek us. And as Brian and Eni have said so beautifully already, however you come here this weekend, whatever you find in your heart, whatever, if you want to be here, if you don't want to be here, this man comes to seek you and pursue you because he loves you. And all the parts of our heart that we find very unbeautiful, all the parts of our heart we'd rather hide, maybe the parts of our heart we pretend don't exist or the parts of our heart we wish we did not struggle with, but this is a massive struggle, he comes for those parts especially. That he comes as a man who seeks us, who is not afraid, and who's, who holds nothing back. God is beautiful. God made the world beautiful because he loves us. And we see that creation. I can see it in your faces as I look at you. We see it in the heart of every single person ever created, made in the image and likeness of God, to live forever with him for all eternity in his beauty. God bless you.